Welcome to this Flux Quick Start tutorial. We will be building a drop-in replacement buck boost converter for the popular Adafruit LM3671 buck converter, which ironically is a drop-in replacement for the LM117 LDO. If you're taking your 1S lithium ion project to the next level, you could use the circuit to squeeze out the extra energy stored in there from 2.8 volts to 3.5 volts where your buck converter or LDO stops regulating. So in this video, I'll walk you through the entire process of designing a board from starting from a blank project to schematic, layout, and Gerber export. Welcome to the Flex UI. To get started, let's create a new project. You can rename the project at the top left up here. Next, let us add a description to this project to help other users, such as Copilot, know what this project is about. Now I'm going to change the permissions on the project so anyone on the internet can view it. In the advanced menu, you can also add specific people to the project. Here I'm going to add my alternate account and I'm going to give it editing access. I'm going to put a reference schematic from the datasheet using comments. To start a comment, press C. Flux comments support full markdown and embedded images. Here I put a link to the screenshot I took. Now you can reference your design without switching back and forth between tabs. Comments are another way you can interact with Copilot. To invoke Copilot, just use the Copilot handle. Let's add our first part to design. In the library, you can find public parts that other users have published, as well as parts that you have published, public or private. To add it to design, all you have to do is drag it and drop it into Canvas. According to the design, we need a 10 microfarad input capacitor. So the first passive we'll be adding to the design is a generic capacitor. With generic capacitors, you can actually change the footprint to whatever you want. 0603 works for us right now. We can add values we know right now and leave the rest blank for later. In Flux, you can rotate your components by using the bracket keys. You can align components using these alignment guides. And to start tracing, you click on these little dots. Let's connect C1 to VN. Let's grab our ground and power terminals. You can move the meta modules uh, by dragging them. So let's rename it to VN and let's align this ground to the capacitor, wire that up. And when creating traces, if you want to change the trace elbow, you can press F to pay respect. One note on net portals and power portals, they form electrical connections to anything with the same designator. I've gone ahead and finished tracing the design according to the reference. Now we're ready to move on to the PCB. To do so, you just click on the PCB tab up here. Because I know the board outline I want, the first thing I'm going to do is change the layout shape. You can do this by clicking on the layout object and going to the toolbar and entering your dimensions. Here we want a 0.4 by 0.6 inch board. We also want a corner radius on the top two corners. So we're going to put 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 and 0 to specify the first two corners, but not the last two. So when placing your parts, you might find that these values and designators are undesirable, or you might just want to modify them. So let me show you how to use rules to change that. Under rules, you can click on add new rule set. I've made some already, so we can get rid of the new one and go dive deep into these ones. So in the remove all values rule set, we're selecting for all values and setting their enabled property to false. We also put an important flag to make sure it overrides any other settings. The same thing is done for the high designators, and I can turn them off and turn them back on. You can also add other properties here, such as font size. And here's a list of all the properties you can add to all the parts that you're selecting. When placing components, you might jump back and forth between schematic and PCB to know which part you're placing. When placing them, you want to minimize the crossover and distance of the air wires and try to imagine what the traces will look like when you do so. To align parts, you can easily do so by right-clicking, go into the Align menu, and pressing one of the Align options. Make sure you also follow design heuristics like keeping decoupling capacitors close to the supply pins to minimize parasitic inductances, as well as keeping high-frequency signals far away from other high-frequency signals to minimize crosstalk potential. Let me know in the comments if you're interested about these design tips. When you're ready to start routing, all you have to do is press on one of these routing touch points to begin a trace. You can press W to cycle through trace widths. In this case, I want my traces to be able to handle 1.2 amps. 
but also be able to neck from these small pins of the BGA package. So we're going to go into the net container and add an object specific rule called preferred trace widths. As you can see, this rule is inheritable, meaning all other net containers underneath it will have this rule apply to them. So let's add 200 micrometers, 10 mils, and 15 mils. This is because 15 mils will ultimately be able to do the 1.2 amps uh, handling capacity, and 200 micrometers is the width of these little pins. And as you can see, now that it's applied to my net, if I were to start routing and cycle through, W gets me a nice trace that is the same size as this VGA package, and I can start incrementing um, to 15 mils. Uh, and when I do so, I have successfully necked uh, this pin to a larger trace. Let's say you need a drop of via to another layer. While routing, you can right click and you'll see a menu for all the layers you can drop a via to. Exactly where you right click is where the via will spawn. You can continue routing this way, but if you want to change your mind, you can also switch which layer you want to go to. In this case, I just realized that we have a four layer stack up when I want a two layer stack up. So I would go to my layout object and I will change the stack up to a two layer stack up. If you don't see this rule, you can add it here. Now that I'm done routing this board, I want to add our logo to it. So go into the layout, add a silk line object. Uh, this will make sense in a second and give it an asset rule. Now you should have uploaded your asset to the asset manager. I did not prescale this. So for SVGs, let's also set the scale to 0 0.0001. Let's actually make it a little bit smaller. Um, a little bit larger than that. And here we have our logo. Uh, to add assets to the asset manager, when you go to the project level inspector, you can click down here in assets and click manage and add items from your computer. Let's take a look at our board in the 3D viewer. Looks good, except I noticed that we don't have anything labeling the pins. So let's go to the 2D viewer. You can change the direction that you're looking at the board uh, using the top or bottom views. And you can add a whole lot of other silk objects. For example, circles, rectangles, or text. Right now we're looking for texts. And let's adjust the font size. Everything is done through properties in Flux. So if you can't find something, it's probably in the properties menu. And put that there. You look in our 3D view and yes, that's what we're looking for. Now we're ready to export. So it's made from a feature and I forgot to mention copper fills. These are turned on by default and will be exported to your Gerbers unless you turn them off. Over here, you can toggle their visibility, which makes it easier to route your board. These apply to each layer and are default connected to ground. If you're going to assemble your board at home, you're ready to export the Gerbers and have the board manufactured. However, if you want this assembled by an assembler, most of them require you to put some information about the parts in your bomb. To inform our bomb, we're going to go in and add manufactured part numbers to our components. So I went ahead and looked for 10 microfarad capacitors and found this part number. Now all my 10 microfarad capacitors uh, need to be updated. So to do that, we can look for 10 micro in the object search, uh, click on each one of them. And one thing you can do is copy the properties by right click, copy special and properties. And clicking through, if you just paste with control V, um, all the properties will be pasted in all the other 10 microfarad capacitors. This way you can go through and quickly update all your capacitors with all the properties that they need after the fact. To export your project in Flex for fabrication, you can click on the Flex logo here, go over export, and first you want the Gerber, which will get downloaded. Next, you want your bill of materials. And finally, you want your pick and place file. So once you're done exporting your files and you go to your manufacturers and assembler of choice, you can add all the parameters according to how you want your board designed. Okay, so now you can upload your Gerber file, which is this one. 
and you can upload your bomb, which is here. This is the bomb. And now you can upload your pick and place or centroid file. And once you submit your order, you will have your board manufactured. As of recording, these uh, boards aren't complete, but they are going to get here eventually. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to buy one.